The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes, without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Sapari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents Which Native American tribe uses the word totem to mean clan? What science speaks of a common worldview of Kazakhs and Indians? How many percent of Indians are officially recognized by the U.S. authorities? History is not an author's simple opinion about the past. History, first of all, implies concrete facts. Therefore, archaeology, which studies and describes the true picture of events, is very important. According to scientists, the first humans on the American continent appeared 40,000 years ago. The resettlement of a people who called themselves Indian from Altai to the east also occurred at that time. Therefore, America was discovered not by Christopher Columbus, but by the Proto-Turks. Historians are increasingly leaning towards this version. A lot of new evidence confirming this fact has appeared recently. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads is also engaged in the research. The next stop is the U.S. capital, Washington, D.C. There is a large national museum. It stores a lot of artifacts and documents related to the history and culture of the American Indian. We took a look at them. The museum staff member, who is a representative of the Pueblo tribe, told us a lot of valuable information. The National Museum of the American Indian in Washington is located next to the Capitol, and this is a very important factor. The institution, which is under the auspices of the Smithson Institute, was founded in 1989 after Congress passed a special law. Exhibits were gathered for about 15 years. On September 21, 2004, the four-story building was commissioned and the museum opened. It has branches in New York and Southland. things that are written about our people are biased and they're not from our words, they're from somebody else outside their interpretation mm -hmm. of who we are. Yeah. We don't have opportunities until recently with this museum to tell our story, you know, the true story of how we believe. Everybody else is just telling our story and it's not correct. Dennis Zotik is a person who can tell about each exhibit of the museum. He knows almost everything about the Indians. The hospitable guide warmly welcomed the members of the Kazakhstan scientific expedition and told the scientists about the rich cultural heritage that his ancestors left. He also shared the results of his own research. My tribe is the Kiowa tribe. We, our, our creation stories say we began in what is now Canada, in the cold white north. And so as we migrated south, we sent explorers in front of us, all different areas. When we got down to what is now the state of Oklahoma in, in the southern plains, we sent explorers into the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is now Mexico. And they came back with these long, beautiful feathers come from parrots and macaws. And they brought them back to us and they became valuable and now they are a part of our culture.
The third millennium for the Indians is the Renaissance. Since the opening of the National Museum, the number of projects on the study of history and culture has increased significantly. Museum features a rich fund. There are 825 exhibits which cover over 1,200 different cultures, a temporary chronology of 12,000 years. These are mainly archaeological and ethnographic monuments. Of them, 68% are from the USA, 11% were brought from South America, 10% are from Mexico and Central America, 6% from the Caribbean and 3.5% were found in Canada. Every year, 1.2 million tourists come to look at the cultural center of the American Indians. This fact, of course, contributes to the further development and study of the culture of the ancient people. We are all Americans, but there are over 600 tribes in the United States. 573 tribes have a nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the United States, and they are called federally recognized tribes. 400 other tribes do not have recognition by the United States, but are recognized by state programs. All tribes recognized by the federal government received official status, Native American Reservation. From a legal point of view, this association was equated to the state. That is, Indians within its framework can create their own government, pass laws, license, and regulate various types of activities. Accordingly, state laws do not apply on the territory of the reserve. In scale, Indian reservations make up 2% of the United States. One-third of all American Indians live there. Approximately 5 million Indians live in the country. This is 1.6% of all Americans. In the United States, Indians do not have power that is American power. Um, we don't have a lot of native. We don't have big population. We have a very small population. So we don't have power there. We are lawmakers that represent us. We don't have any lawmakers to represent us. And then we don't have access to the media, the newspapers, the news. The only time they report on us is when something bad happens. And then they tell their side of the story, we don't tell ours. Recently, all American Indians have been getting on social media. American Indians widely use modern information technology in the study and preservation of their culture. Indians living on the territory of the reservation hold various events in the National Museum, film them and distribute them on social networks. In this way, they try to preserve their native language, culture and religion. However, the process of globalization nevertheless affects the consciousness of the young generation of Indians. And this, of course, does some harm to the preservation and development of national values. There are currently 139 Indian languages in the United States. About half of them are endangered. According to a 2008 study, 72% of Indians do not know their native language and speak English. We are working on two ends right now. On one end, many Indians are moving away from our communities and our reservations and to urban areas for um, jobs and better education. But being away, they are disconnected from our communities. So we are losing language, we are losing culture, we are losing ceremonies because so many Indians are moving away. The peoples who migrated from Altai to America were among the first to master weaving. The museum presents a huge 
number of weaving products. In this matter, the most important thing is the thread, which, like the domesticated horse, played an important role in the development of human civilization. Ropes were woven from the thread, which helped to tame wild horses. All this was the impetus for a further technological breakthrough. Development of methods for producing thread was one of the factors that accelerated the technological revolution. This points on the important role of the first weavers in the history of mankind, the Indians. We know that the Indians of the United States are the indigenous people of America. There were wars and disputes over the land. And now we see that the attitude of the government has changed. Because it is a small nation, now there are schools with a native language where there is an opportunity for American Indians to study their native history and culture. Some work is still underway in this direction. After visiting the National Museum of the American Indians, participants of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads met with their compatriots living in Washington. Participants spoke about many facts confirming that the ancestral home of the American Indians indeed is the sacred land of Altai. In my opinion, there are a lot of similarities between the Indian tribes and the Kazakhs. We face them in everyday life. The school of my son teaches the history and culture of the American Indians. Students visit the cultural centers of the Indians. I noticed that the Indians, like the ancestors of the Kazakhs, honor the spirit of Blue Wolf. They also honor the spirit of their ancestors, live in harmony with nature. The totem symbols of the American Indians are very similar to the symbols of the peoples of Asia, especially the Turkic ones. As the scientist of the 13th 14th centuries, Rashid ad Din wrote, the August tribes were named after various birds hawks, eagles, falcons, jur falcons, sacred falcons. They considered them sacred. And the Indians of North America, especially the Algonkins, represented and associated their ancestors with the images of bears, wolves, deer, and turtles. They used them to name their tribes. The word totem is borrowed from the Indians. In the Ojibwe tribe, this word is translated as a surname. The Indians, as well as the Kok Turks, believe that they came from Kokbori, that is, from the Blue Wolf. <laughs> Indians like the Kazakhs have great respect for elders, for example, in reservations. In addition to the federal court, there are also domestic courts. They resolve disputes within the tribe. That is, the system is similar to the Kazakh Institute of Bees. Some tribes also have a council of elders. Indian tribes as well as the Kazakhs express their thoughts with the help of ornaments and clothes on various objects. That is, their whole life, customs and traditions, the environment are literally saturated with a unique national spirit. Even the color plays a big role. For example, blue symbolizes freedom, white is the justice. Numerous confirmations of the similarity in the worldviews of Indians and Kazakhs are also given by our compatriots living in America. The silver jewelry of the Indians is very similar to the Kazakh ones. And not only patterns and ornaments, even material, they are alike. All jewelry that I brought from the Indians look like Kazakh ones. Everyone asks me with interest where I got them. <laughs> Generic signs and symbols are also a valuable source of information. During the work in America, the participants of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads came across some signs of Kazakh clans. <laughs> 
For example, two parallel lines are the generic sign of the Kipchaks. During traditional dances, Indians draw the same lines on their arms. And Kazakhstan scientists have met this sign more than once. Many tribes have used this. In fact, many cultures around the world use this same swastika. It meant across timbers, the four directions of the changing yes, seasons. Yes. And that's what this represented. Um, in World War I, we have the Army, or the United States Army, and there is a division called the 45th Division. They used to have that emblem. Many documentary facts can be cited confirming that the American Indians have Altai roots. Unfortunately, many do not know about this. The capital of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan, will soon host a research conference on historical education. The leader of the expedition, Sapar Iskakov, invited his American colleagues to this forum. He also proposed to hold a special ethnographic festival of singers and dancers to unite all relatives in the Great Steppe. Therefore, the task of the Kazakhs, who historically are the heirs of this land, is the rapprochement and uniting of all kindred peoples of a large Turkic family. Bularga paydalısı, bular ömür boyu o kontinente turgan, yeş yaktan kelgen yok, bular turguluktu kalık degen sonday bir oğun bol görük. It's more convenient for them to say that they always lived here, that they are indigenous people. Therefore, when we ask the question whether it is true that their ancestors came from Asia, Altai, they try to evade answering. But internally, of course, they know that we have common roots. During 10 days in the USA, we collected a lot of information. Of course, we still study all this and submit it for discussion at a scientific conference. Biz kub meri mesinadak, onun ber nerini biz barkanın gini, ber mana da ekolmi kanferansı da talklaytın bulamız. The world map now looks like this, but half a century ago it was completely different. Significant changes have taken place over 50 years. Korea was split into two countries. Germany, on the contrary was united. In Africa, 17 states gained independence. The USSR collapsed, instead of which 15 new states appeared. And all these are natural processes. Every month, two languages spoken by representatives of indigenous people disappear in the world. And with them, knowledge, customs, traditions are lost. Therefore, it is very important for the future generation to study the past and do everything possible to preserve it. Our history is a great story in which there are no moments to be shy of. Our ancestors created civilizations and united them. To study the heritage of ancestors and tell the whole world about it, the team of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads set off on a fascinating and challenging journey. <laughs> Bizdeng mano tursumuzga kiyin kiyimde kurb tangalat. Kajaktan geldiğimizdir. Bu kayil biz berlakan da itibadır. Bosna bir Kajakstan diye niyet var. Mano ortaya Kajakstan yerinde. Biz Bosna olsun da kalk biz. Biz sizlerimin yakın biz, tuğus biz diye ne vaktinde. Bular tol kurbni tangalı batar, arzava batar. Bizdeng Bosna. Many are surprised at our visit and, most importantly, its purpose. After all, we, in fact, are looking for our distant relatives. The Indians are glad that they have a kindred nation in distant Asia. It would be very nice if our culture ministry ensures an exchange of artists, musicians, artisans, art groups. Concerts and other cultural events would bring our peoples together. Almasu Volvatsa, Mazal Bizing Artir, Bizing Ensemble, Kelly, Bujaka, was never cancelled Koyvatsa, Blar the Bishakravatsa, Blar Kelly, Bizge, Janda, Wither, Wunder, and Kosetwasa, Sonda, Bizka, two sculptor written day, Bizing Aramis, Jacques The work of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads in the USA is completed. However, the theme of the Indians who consider the sacred Altai land their historical homeland will continue. 
The next stop of Kazakhstan scientists is the capital of Mexico, Mexico City. The name of this metropolis is directly related to the Indians. Watch the next episode to learn more.